Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back into another edition of my NFL Draft Top 5 videos. This time talking about top 5 biggest risks when it comes to the first and second round of NFL Draft Night. These are 5 players that are very likely going to be invested on with first round picks, with second round picks that carry major risks. Whether it's injury proneness, whether it's lack of college production or personality issues. This is my top five biggest risks list. First, we are going to talk about a quick honorable mention. And this is a guy that I really do not want to include on this list because I think he's going to be really elite in the NFL. But you do have to talk about him because this is risks and with injury. Uh, the honorable mention is going to be Jamison Williams, the receiver from Alabama, who is well, probably the you know one of the fastest receivers in the class. The one guy a lot of people are comparing to kind of a bigger Tyreek Hill. This is a guy, if he had not suffered a torn ACL in the national championship game, you could very easily see him going eighth overall to the Falcons if a team falls in love with his speed. Uh, he's one of those guys where he is a specific wide receiver. Like, if you want a taller receiver, he's not going to be your guy. But again, if he had not suffered an injury, uh, a, a severe injury in particular, he could potentially be the number one receiver off the board. But he did suffer that injury, so I would look for Jamison Williams to go more towards the back end of the first round. Maybe mid-first. No, I could see mid. I could see like 14th or 15th overall, somewhere around there for Jamison Williams. Uh, but he did suffer that torn ACL. Now, there are videos of him on Twitter already running. He's about four months post-recovery, I believe, at this point, because it is late April. He suffered it in early January. So this is a guy, I think he's going to be fine when it comes to the NFL, but you are drafting him you know, coming off a major injury. That is something for teams to take into account. It's not exactly a David Ajabo situation. We'll get to David Ajabo. He is in my top five list, but... Um, uh, because he suffered the injury earlier, Ajabo just recently had his, I believe, torn ACL. So, Jameson Williams, I think he's going to be unbelievable, but I do have to put him as an honorable mention. He should still be a mid-first round pick. He's already running. I'm sure his agent is telling everyone his recovery is going fine. He's probably sending them videos of him running, things like that, to these teams so they don't get scared off from him. But he is my one honorable mention when it comes to the biggest risks in the first or second round. Now let's get to my actual top five list. Coming in at number five, it's actually going to be Tyler Smith, who is an offensive tackle from Tulsa, and there are some actual mock drafts that have Tyler Smith going in the back half of the first round. This is a true project type offensive tackle who really has not faced very much good competition at all. I understand you could say the same thing about Trevor Penning, who I love. The reason Trevor Penning is not on this list and Tyler Smith is, is because I think Trevor Penning has a better overall body type to be an elite offensive tackle in the NFL. Tyler Smith, to me, his technique is a lot more raw. He needs a lot more seasoning in the NFL. This guy, if he's going to be drafted by a team like the Bucs late in the first round, I've seen him mocked to the Bucs. I believe they give they have like the you know 27th, 28th overall pick in the first round. Um, that is a risk. He's a big risk. He's really raw, high upside, obviously, if he's going to be a first-round pick. No injury concerns with him. Again, it's not just the injuries when it comes to the biggest risks. It's also, uh, you know, the lack of competition and playing at Tulsa and being as raw as Tyler Smith is. People are basically drafting him based off of his build. And if you're going to draft an offensive tackle based off of their build, I think Braxton Jones from Southern Utah is going to give you a lot better value to where you could draft him in the fourth or fifth round personally. And again, I know people will say, well, what about Trevor Penning? He went to Northern Illinois. I just think Trevor Penning, his body type, his overall technique is a lot more refined find than Tyler Smith. So Tyler Smith comes in at number five. If he does go into the first round, that is a major risk. He's really raw. Uh, and if you're going to insert him in, you know, into that right tackle position week one, 2022, that's going to be scary because he's a very raw player coming in at number four. It's going to be, it is going to be Kayvon Thibodeau, the pass rusher from Oregon. This is a former five-star recruit. This is one of those freak athletes. I've really had a tough time grading this dude because part of me says this dude is your such a prototypical bust. 
His head's not in it. There's been rumors. He has aspirations outside of football. He doesn't really care. He was injured a lot at Oregon. But it is important to note out, when he played, he had elite production. His pressure rate was really good. He was getting sacks. He's a physical freak. So part of the argument is he's showing so many different signs of being one of these prima donna pass rushers that ends up you know, injury prone, ends up a bust. But then the other side of it, even if he's a Jadavian Clowney, Jadavian Clowney is still an elite football player. He's still an elite. Like, when you're that much of a freak, you're still going to have an effect on the game, even if you're not getting sacks. You could be really good with pressure rate. You could cause the quarterback to move out of the pocket, things like that. Uh, so he comes in at number four. I still have him as a top 10 overall prospect. I still think he's going to go top 10. There's been some talk about him possibly getting, you know, falling in the draft outside of the top 10. I don't think that's going to happen, but he comes in at number four just because there's been different rumors about he's, his head's not really in it. He was injured at Oregon off and on. He comes in at number four. Moving on to number three. This is a tough one for me. It is going to be David Ajabo. Now, when it comes to David Ajabo, and, you know, a team drafting him, it just comes down to organizational philosophy. Personally, I would never pick a kid like this p coming off a major injury where he suffers the injury at Michigan's Pro Day literally a month ago. I just wouldn't feel safe doing it. A team will probably end up drafting him late first, early second. The fan bases of those teams normally get really excited because they think they got an absolute steal if he hails correctly from his injury, which we all expect him to. A lot of people don't remember, but before David Ajabo's major injury, he was being mocked 12th overall, 13th overall, for like mid first round. He was a solid guaranteed first round pick. The injury happens. He gets knocked down. I'm seeing him at 29-30. I'm seeing him fall out of the first round. Again, this is an organizational philosophy thing. Are you confident drafting a kid you know is injured and you know has a long road to recovery ahead? He, I don't, I don't believe he had very many injuries at Michigan, so it's not like this is his second or third big injury. But again, this is an injury that just happened at Michigan's Pro Day basically a month ago, a little bit different from Jamison Williams, who suffered his almost four months ago in early January. So David Ajabo, the Michigan pass rusher who was going to be a mid-first round pick, there are concerns about him potentially falling out of the first round due to that injury. And I have to throw him on the biggest risks list just because you're drafting a player that you are relying on will come back from a major injury that he just suffered one month ago. One month ago, and if he falls out of the first round, a team is probably going to trade up and draft him early second round on Friday night, and their fan base is going to go crazy and say, we got such great value. Well, you got such great value if he heals properly and plays well. You did get good value, but it's a risk. It's a risk, and it is a risk. If I was a GM, I would not take it. I would not draft David Ajabo unless I was 1,000% sure his recovery is going exactly right. It's just tough to take a guy that's injured in the first round. That's a big investment. It's a big investment and he comes in at number three. Moving on to number two, it's going to be Boye Mafe, the pass rusher from Minnesota. And this is just one of those players, I've said it before, it's a disconnect for me. This kid, I, I nicknamed these guys, all athleticism, no production. It was Jason O.A. last year. You can say he proved me wrong. I still don't think he's going to be that great in the NFL. I know he had a good rookie year. I understand. But again, when you have a lot of athleticism, scouts fall in love with it. Very similar to um, Trayvon Walker. Although that's a whole other different situation. But uh, this kid, very little college production. They love his measurables. Uh, you know, they love his overall testing numbers, his agility, his speed combined with his size. I understand it, but he's really raw. His technique is really raw. And all those contributing factors go into me ranking him second overall on my biggest, uh, most risky players to draft on draft night. I've seen him, you know, this kid going late first round in most mock drafts. He might fall to the early second round, but I wouldn't personally draft this kid in the first or the second or the third round. Personally, that's just my opinion. I think he's going to be a major bust in the NFL. He comes in at number two on my overall biggest risks uh, for the 2022 draft. And number one, 
my number one biggest risk. It is going to be N'Kobe Dean. I'm kidding. It's not. N'Kobe Dean is the best player in the draft. It is going to be Derek Stingley Jr. And this is another polarizing one. There's really... There's two different ways you can look at this, and I did make this point in defense for Derek Stingley Jr. with the injuries. LSU, so Derek Stingley Jr. is a former five-star recruit. He was a former top five overall player. You already know he's a stud athlete because if you're a top five player in your class and you're a cornerback coming out of high school, you're a stud athlete. He comes in his freshman year, his true freshman year at LSU, he's a shutdown corner. You know how rare it is to be a true freshman starting cornerback on a national championship team. Not only be a starting cornerback, he was one of the best cornerbacks in all of college football the year LSU and Joe Burrow won the national title. His sophomore year, he play, he's injured. LSU wasn't very good, so he ended up, we don't really know how much you know of a contributing factor the injury was versus LSU not being very good, so he didn't want to risk it. His junior year, he gets injured again. Again, LSU wasn't very good, so we don't really know. Was it the injury? Was it a combination of the injury and LSU being out of the playoff mix? We don't really know right now. And the, th why, the reason he's number one on my list is because he is going to be drafted very high. Probably the lowest he's going to be picked is number 13 overall or number 14. Very likely he's going to be probably you know a late top 10 pick, maybe pick number 10 or 11, somewhere around there. The second cornerback off the board behind Ahmad Gardner. And to draft a guy that high that's missed basically all of the last two years... You know, he's had one good year in college, although it was a great year as a true freshman. He still only had one good year in college. This could be a guy that very simply is injury prone. Now, I'm sure teams are going to do their research. I'm sure Derek Stingley Jr.'s agent is telling these teams he really wasn't injured. LSU was out of it. We didn't want to rush it. We knew he, we knew he was a lot to be a first-round pick after his elite true freshman season. I'm sure that's what his scout is saying, or that's what his um his agent is telling these NFL teams that might consider drafting him. But I have to put him at number one. Very polarizing prospect. One of the best true freshman seasons I've ever seen from a cornerback. After his true freshman season, when you looked at future, you know, 2022 mock drafts after his true freshman season, this was a guy that was top three or top four overall player uh, very easily on basically every single board. So uh, Derek Stingley Jr., polarizing. I have to put him at number one due to his sophomore and junior seasons basically being completely injury riddled slash Maybe he was playing it safe because LSU was out of the playoff race. We don't really know. There's a lot of cloudy murkiness surrounding Derek Stingley Jr. in terms of that. So guys, once again, my top five, I do have Jamison Williams as the honorable mention, but I think Jamison Williams is going to be fine, but you do have to account for him coming off a major injury that he just suffered four months ago, so he's the honorable mention, the receiver from Alabama. Number five is Tyler Smith, who is a very raw offensive tackle from uh, Tulsa and you know his competition level there's major concerns about that as well but just his overall technique he's a very raw player he comes in at number five Kayvon Thibodeau the uh, pass rusher from Oregon physical beast Jadavian Clowney type uh, athlete the problem with him is, you know, there's some question marks about his love for football, which I think that stuff is ridiculous. You know, this is a former five-star. This is a guy that's going to be motivated to get that second contract that Nick Bose is about to get, that Max Crosby get. You know, these pass rushers are getting paid crazy amounts of money now. So I think he'll be motivated, but he did suffer injuries on and off at Oregon. That's something to take into account. Number three, it's going to be David Ajabo, the pass rusher from Michigan, who's coming off a major injury. He just suffered a month ago. Number two, it's going to be Boye Mafe, the pass rusher from Minnesota, who I, you know, consider all athleticism, no production. And then number one is going to be Derek Stingley Jr., the cornerback from LSU, who has some major injury concerns. So when it comes to this top five list, most of it is going to be injury concerns. These are five guys that if your team drafts them in the first round, you're going to have to worry a little bit more than some of these other guys, than someone like a Nicobe Dean, like a Devin Lloyd, you know, guys that are not injured, that has never suffered a major injury, things like that. These are serious risks. Not to say they won't pay off. Maybe Derek Stingley Jr. has a completely healthy NFL career, but when you have nagging injury after nagging injury, 
it tends to lead to problems when you start facing even better athletes, when you start taking even bigger hits from stronger, faster dudes. That becomes a bit of an issue. So we will have to see if any of these guys have major injury concerns in the NFL. But guys, that is going to do it for this video. Make sure you're following me on Twitter. Link to that's always in the description. I'm, of course, the Depressed Ginger. Thank you for watching.